flexible. They shall never be bent out of joint. And uh, we're going to start anyway and praise our God. Okay, so from Psalm 147, praise the Lord. It's good to sing praises to our God. So we're going to do that as we sing for the beauty of the earth. We're just going to sing a couple verses, but hopefully you know the last part. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. This is often sung at Thanksgiving, but it's a great song to think, sing on Mother's Day, thankful for our moms. Let's stand together as we sing for the beauty of the earth. said we have to do all the verses. That's good. <laughs> we'll help you. For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies. than you thought you did. That was beautiful. We're going to sing now, Blessed Be Your Name. And, you know, the word blessed means happy or, you know, inward joy, no matter what you're going through today. If you know Jesus as your Savior, he'll get you through this, the joy, the suffering. So trust that. We sing together, Blessed Be Your Name.
This is awesome. This is great. So welcome, all of you people zooming in with us. We're going to continue. Um, is he worthy? So I want you to really remember that he has conquered the grave as we sing this great tune. Is he worthy?
so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Well, we got it together, didn't we? You know what? I, I, I get, you know, pretty wired for the stuff that I have to do on Sunday morning. Um, but I, I don't think we appreciate enough what these guys do to put things together. I mean, that's just a whole different level of stress to... You can't even see. Stuff happens. It's in the air, and somehow it's all supposed to come together. And, uh, and God is good, and we th are thankful for those guys back there. And we're thankful for you this morning. Thank you so much for being here, making Bethany your home uh, for worship and looking to Christ on this Sunday morning, this Mother's Day Sunday morning. If you're here in person, God bless you. Thank you so much. Hope as you came through the commons that you stopped at the Welcome Center, got a program that has the information you're going to need for this morning. Hope that you were warmly welcomed as you arrived. If you're joining us online this morning, thanks for sticking with us in the midst of uh, our technology uh, moment. But uh, if you're joining us online, we are grateful to have you joining us this morning. We hope that you'll take a moment to uh, drop a note in the comments as they scroll. Let us know where you're watching from this morning. Uh, if you're a first time viewer, as we live stream this morning, include the word new uh, in your comment. And that is a joy to us to know where you're watching from and that uh, you are a part of our family this morning. And we hope that you feel at home. A number of things going on today. Those are included in your program. And again, hope you got one of those. If you're watching online, there's a link for all of that information, and you can access it in that way. I uh, want to make you aware of a couple of things that are going on. Out in the commons this morning, there's three particular areas you need to be aware of. First, kind of over on the side is a place uh, for you to, uh, to look at the information from Compassion. Um, Compassion is an organization where you are able to sponsor a child, see them have their physical but also their spiritual needs met, and to do that on a monthly basis, if you would be willing to sponsor a child, we have information and packets there available for you, and uh, if you want to see Karen Bump following the service, she can help you with that. Right next to that is our Operation Christmas Child information. You say, oh my stars, it is uh, May, it's not Christmas. Well, we plan all year for that event. Uh, we collect things as the year goes on and then we put them together in those boxes and ship them off to children who might not otherwise know what Christmas is, what the meaning of Christmas is, and they are introduced through Christ um, in, a, in a very special way. And so we support that ministry and we encourage you to do so. There's a place to leave gifts and a list of the items that we're collecting during the month of May. Look at that item, if those items if you would. Also want to uh, make you aware of another area that's right next to the Welcome Center. That is our area for CareNet Pregnancy Resource Center. I'm going to invite uh, Amy Cooper. Where in the world is she? Come on up here, young lady. And she's just going to share a brief word with regard to that and uh, what we're beginning this Mother's Day and what will go out through the next several weeks. Amy, would you share a word about that, please? Good morning. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Isn't Mother's Day great? I like breakfast in the morning. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> Especially if I don't have to cook it. Um, so Mother's Day, CareNet, that year around again. Um, I know that I see a lot of new faces, so I'm going to um, remind everyone CareNet is a donation-run foundation that um, provides support for women and families who otherwise wouldn't have any support towards uh, learning about pregnancies or the opportunities they have to keep their child. Um, as Pastor Ruben once said before, these bottles are in the Welcome Center and they, um, you can put your spare change in or a little crinkle instead. <laughs> um, that goes from starting today till Father's Day, June 20th. And any questions you have, I'll be here to answer them. Happy Mother's Day again. Thanks, Amy. So, 
As you're exiting this morning, you can stop by the table and pick up a bottle, keep it somewhere prominent, your kitchen table, uh, maybe the table as you come in and out of your house. Uh, and uh, we encourage you to use those uh, to support that ministry and, um, and the work that they're doing uh, for young mothers, fathers, and families. So be aware of that if you would. Uh, just in terms of regular things, don't forget prayer meeting uh, downstairs, 7 o'clock on Tuesday evening. Bible studies during the week for ladies and for men. That information is available on our website, on our calendars, and in other ways. And so we invite you to involve yourselves in those. Uh, if you would, I want to make special mention with regard to our pastor's pick of the month. Uh, we encourage you to subscribe to Right Now Media. It is a gift that we give the church to encourage discipleship and spiritual growth. Um, this month, my pick has to do with the issue of the persecuted church. And uh, you're going to see on your Bethany at prayer, your prayer guide, each week we list a, a country where persecution is severe with regard to our brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, this particular month's video series highlights persecution and in the early church in the book of Acts and ties it into vignettes and into real life happenings today in our world where Christians are being persecuted. And it really is a very interesting study. I want to encourage you. The, the little segments are short. It's not like an hour and a half long. They're only like seven, eight minutes long. And you can just do them, you know, at different times during the month. But want to encourage you to do that uh, and enter into just thinking a little bit more about the blessing we have here um, of being able to worship freely and some of the things that our brothers and sisters in Christ go through in other parts of the world. And so, uh, so I want to encourage you to do that if you would. Um, let me thank you for your faithful giving, finally, and um, we are giving. There's a little place out in the uh, commons where we invite you to leave your gifts. If you're online, you can also uh, mail in a donation, and thank you for supporting our, our ministry and our local work here in Gardner, and as you enjoy it, wherever you are out there in the, uh, uh, in the, in the wide world. And so uh, we're excited to have people here this morning. We're excited that today's Mother's Day, and we want to take the moments that we have. For the beauty of the earth, we started where it talks about our families, and it talks about uh, brother, sister, parent, child. Uh, we want to focus on those ideas. Uh, this morning, we want to uh, encourage them as we're going through our message series faith at home. So we're going to be speaking to that this morning. And so moms, we're glad that you're here. Ladies, we're glad that you're here. Following the service this morning, our deaconesses have a special gift for you, ladies. As you leave the, uh, the auditorium, the sanctuary, they're going to be at the back door and they will hand those to you as you, um, as you leave. And uh, that's just our way of appreciating you for all that you do, ladies, in our lives and moms uh, for, for us. Um, let, me let me ask you, if you would, if you're a, a mom and you're here this morning, would you stand so we can recognize you? Thank you so much. Let me invite you to, uh, to be seated. We're going to share in a little video clip together, and then I want to take a moment and pray for you. And so, um, uh, gentlemen, if you would, we'll let you click that and uh, just give your attention to the screen if you would. Try looking with your eyes this time. Be 
How many of you are the embodiment of that <laughs> as a mom? How many of you have one of those kinds of things in your home and can relate to what it's like to have one of those things in your home? Isn't it Alexa or whatever? Alexa, do this. I can't say the G word because if I say the G word, you know what the G word is, and I'm not saying God. The G word, a lot of your phones are going to say, how may I help you? And we don't want to set all your phones off this morning because I know my phone would go off if I were to say that. But uh, we, are, we are just expressing our appreciation to you this morning, moms, uh, for... for. So moms, so thankful for you this morning and so glad that you've chosen to be here and let us share that appreciation with you. I want to bow now and just pray for our moms and then I'm going to invite uh, Deacon Al Bump. He's going to come up and lead us in prayer for some other items this morning and uh, after that we're going to uh, share in some special music and, uh, and look at the word together. So let's pray. Father, we uh, thank you so much today for the opportunity to just reflect and to be thankful for moms. Um, Lord, today is a unique, unique day. Um, it is, uh, it's far bigger than we think perhaps because there are so many different kinds of moms and we want to be sure, Lord, that all of them know that they are honored today, that they are appreciated, that they are cared for, that they are loved. Uh, Lord, today we pray for the mom, um, we pray for the mom that's chosen to stay at home uh, while their children are little. And uh, I just pray that, um, that your patience uh, would be great and your influence even greater, that, uh, Lord, you would bless them. For single moms who maybe, maybe never planned uh, to, go al to go it alone, Lord, um, we pray that you'd consistently strengthen them uh, and that God, uh, they may hear your voice uh, just over them as they, uh, as they walk in that journey. Um, we pray today for moms who, who work to seek to balance things in the home and work and things outside the home. Lord, um, I pray that you would give them energy and you would give them stamina, that you would give them wisdom. Uh, as they, they leap from one world to another uh, on, on each of those days, and the Lord guide them in that. Lord, we pray um, today for those who maybe struggle because they didn't have the moms that maybe they would have hoped or, or that, uh, that things weren't quite all that uh, they could have been in their homes. Um, Lord, thank you for, for moms who do not allow the, the errors of the past to repeat themselves in the present and seek you and seek to honor you as, as they navigate the, um, the, the, the journey of parenthood. May, may they leave, may each mom leave a, a godly legacy, we would pray. Um, for moms whose kids are out the door and uh, who are empty nesters, Lord, uh, help them to be prayerful for their children as they now journey on their own. Help them, God, to, uh, to experience uh, satisfaction and fulfillment in um, having done the very best that they could to prepare them for all that life has for them. Lord, we pray today, and uh, even though it's Mother's Day, we acknowledge all of our ladies uh, for, their, for their love and their care, and we pray for, for Lord, um, those ladies who don't have children but mentor us and care for us and um, 
are, are just uh, able to speak into the lives of others with a level of freedom and, and calling that, uh, that, um, that moms to specific kids maybe, maybe don't have. Lord, today uh, it, is, it is unique, and, and so Lord, we uh, thank you for this Sunday that allows us to recognize moms, our ladies. We pray and we ask um, that, uh, that you would bless them, that you would fill them with joy, and we thank you for making our world uh, a better place because of them and your work through them. For we pray in Christ's name, amen. Al. How y'all doing this morning? We have a lot to, to praise God for. Praise Him for a beautiful day with a Carolina blue sky. Um, praise Him that we're called here by, by the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ to worship together. Um, I'd like to praise Him for Carol Dunn. Uh, received good results from, from her tests. Praise God for that. Praise God for Lisa Milligan's good results from her stress test. Lisa, if you're out there, praise God for that. Um, some prayer requests, and I encourage you all to pick up a prayer guide before you leave. Um, Carol Abbott's, Carolyn Abbott's sister, Cynthia, has a friend, Natalie, um, who's having um, some issues. Um, she's discouraged, and she needs um, to know Christ's peace and comfort in her family, with her family's new circumstances. So please pray for that. But a lot of people in this time are going through a lot of issues uh, because of isolation. Um, so what we just need to pray that, that uh, the Holy Spirit just comes upon all of us um, and just encourages everyone. Uh, Richard Spencer is being treated for diverticulitis and he's doing well. Um, all, so please pray for Richard and Jerry. Um, Here's your weekly reminder, pray for revival. Pray for revival. Everybody needs to get down on their knees and pray for revival. Um, please, as pastor said, pray for the persecuted church, pray for the persecutors, pray for the martyrs. Um, and as always, please continue to pray for the Zaza people. Um, we are a house of prayer, so please join me. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this opportunity to join together as brothers and sisters in Christ. We're grateful that it's almost summer. We're grateful that uh, all the blessings that you've given us here living in the United States, large and small, help us, Lord, to always remember that all good things come from you. We're grateful that our sisters in Christ, Carol Dunn and Lisa Milligan, um, have received uh, clean bills from their tests. We're grateful that you've seen fit to reach out and call members of our family, call members of our community, Lord. We're grateful for the irresistible grace that you have shown us in calling us to belief in your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we lift up so many members of our congregation that are having surgery and procedures this week. We ask for your physical healing. We ask, for, more importantly, Lord, for your spiritual healing. We ask for your Holy Spirit in each of our hearts. We ask for the comfort and the confidence to know that we walk with you. We lift up Natalie, a health counselor in California who has been battling suicidal thoughts, Lord. There's so many people like Natalie out there, Lord. We ask for the prayer, the comfort in the, in the, of your Holy Spirit in her life and in her family's life. We lift up our brother in Christ, Richard Spencer, and his wife, Jerry, and we're grateful that you've shown them mercy, and we're grateful to have them here as uh, family members in Bethany. Lord, we lift up your persecuted church. We're grateful that you've seen fit to use them as a means of grace, an example to show us what your power can do in the face of persecution. We ask your spiritual comfort on the persecuted church. We ask your spiritual comfort on the families of the martyrs. We're grateful that you have seen fit to speed the martyrs to their heavenly reward. Lord, we ask that you see to the hearts of the persecutors and please turn their hearts from their persecution and most importantly Lord we ask that you give us humility and mercy to our persecutors and the people in our community help us to become missionaries here in the Gardner community help us to spread the love of Christ 
Help us, Lord, to take the gospel to our neighbors and to be fearless in the proclaiming of your resurrected Son, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. We'd like to dedicate the song to all the mothers out there. Oh Jesus, grant me hope and comfort. Thank you so much. Let me invite you to take out your message guide today, and uh, you'll be able to follow along with our time in the Word uh, this morning, and uh, uh, you take that with you, and then on the back, you'll notice that there's a little place that we call Bethany at Home, and it's an opportunity for you to take the thoughts and the things that we share this morning and to uh, apply them uh, to uh, your lives and uh, to kind of think through uh, how to do that um, uh, in a more particular way. Uh, as I go down there to pick up my, uh, my little clicker, let me just remind you of a couple things. Thank you, Francis. Um, uh, today uh, is 
uh, Joe and Pat Westbury's 11th anniversary, and we want to thank you uh, for being here, you guys, and God bless you. On um, Was it Friday, Ben and Judy? She's not telling. See? Ornery. Still ornery. 60th anniversary for that great couple back there. And one of the things as we talk about families and as we do that together as a church, we, uh, one of the things that is an incredible blessing is to have in our church couples who have, who have lived out their, their marriages together and worked through whatever it is that, that came their way and, and did all that they could to, and, and raised godly children. And so to be, reflect on heritage like that is so important. And so God bless you both back there. Um, and uh, it is good to have each and every one of you here uh, this morning. We're working through a, uh, a series this year called More Than Conquerors. It's our theme from Romans chapter 8 that God has called us to be more than conquerors in Christ. And so we're looking at individual areas of our lives where we can be more victorious. Uh, and so we've worked some, through some of those areas and we're in a series right now speaking about being conquerors where, conquerors where we're talking about faith at home. How can I be more of what God wants me to be? How can I be more victorious? victorious in my faith in Christ and as a husband, as a wife, as a parent, uh, as a grandparent, um, or perhaps as, as just a, a neighbor or a friend, an aunt or an uncle, um, how can we grow our families to be more of what God would desire for them to be? And so today we're going to uh, look and focus specifically on moms, and then uh, in the month of June we're going to focus specifically on dads, uh, on that, uh, that special Sunday uh, the 20th. So if you have a Bible, let me invite, encourage you to take that out. If you're home and you have a Bible, let me encourage you to take it out. Uh, we're going to start in Titus chapter 2 this morning. We're going to be looking at four particular passages of Scripture that give us some insight into our topic for the morning. If you're here this morning and you, you're, maybe it's your first time or you don't have a Bible, we have Bibles available out in the commons at the Welcome Center. I invite you to pick up one of the packages there and take the Bible with you. Uh, we, we want, there's no reason that everyone should not have a Bible. And so uh, that is our gift to you. If you do not have one, please make sure you stop by there and you grab one of those if you would. So this morning, the topic and the, the title for my message is Making Great Moms. And, and that's coming from a guy who never was a mom. And you might say, well, I'm not exactly sure what, how it's going to come to the table. Well, the good thing is this, is that, is that I'm able to share and any mom is able to, to use the things that God's word brings for us to do whatever it is that we're doing well. And so I'm just reminding you of things that God has shown us and, and laid on the table for us with regard to, to moms. And so I want to encourage you, if you're here this morning, um, you know, and, and it's a little bit, it may sound self-serving. If you're here this morning and you are, um, and, and you're an active mom, I want you to listen close. If you've already raised your children and they're out of the gate, that's okay. You can listen too. And, and maybe you, you don't have children of your own. That's okay. You can listen too because there will be those in your lives and God will put in the sphere of your influence individuals who can benefit from the things that God's word says about the home and about being a good mom. So some observations just to start with regard to this whole issue of mothering, and, uh, and I just use this to lay a foundation, a groundwork for us. And the first is this, don't believe the lies of our culture. It's very interesting, if you didn't catch it in the news this week, there's this push to change the name of Mother's Day to something that has to do with birthers or birthing. And so it really, it really, if you would, it goes beyond the idea of just the person who gives birth to the children, but it removes from it the context or the larger context of the fact that this person who gives birth is also called upon and has that major role of developing and pouring into and discipling and stewarding the life that they've been entrusted with. Let me encourage you today as we talk about this to be open in the things that I'm going to say, but to also do not buy 
insight into the lies that our predominant culture will tell us, those things that are out there that have to do with being a mom and being a parent. Don't think that it is wasting your time for you to, to, to change a diaper or to hold your child or to comfort them. Don't think it's a waste for you to take your time and to go to their sporting events. Don't think that it's a waste of time for you to be a part of the things that are their growing up years and even the things that come after. Please know that those things are important and those are investment opportunities for you. You have to take, if you would, a long, long, long range view in terms of your parenting, not just, you know, a couple years. We're still, Debbie and I, we're still parenting our children. I'm so blessed to have my son here this morning and, um, and his fiance. But our parenting has not ended yet, even though he's an adult. They're, they're adults, and, and, and God has, has an incredible plan for them. And so don't, don't allow culture to skew the way that you view your role and responsibility and stewardship as parents. The second thing I want to suggest is this. Do believe that what you do matters. It matters. All of those, all of those moments, all of those situations, when you sit down and you pull away from whatever and invest it in that relationship, all of those matter. And they sow and produce, if you would, they shape the future. Here's just a couple examples. I wanted to go and highlight some great men, some great individuals who had, who, who made enormous contributions to our world and to our country, but, and, and to just highlight what they said about their moms. So listen to a couple of these. Abraham Lincoln said he was what he was because of his mom. Charles Haddon Spurgeon said he was what he became because of his mother. John Wesley, the revivalist, the, pre the preacher, one of the great leaders of, of the spiritual awakening, said he and his brother were who they were because of their mother, and they became who they were because of their mom. Don't get so caught up in, in the language, please. Don't get so caught up in, in the things that we see around us that we miss the opportunity to make a difference because what you do matters. What you do matters. So this morning, let me share with you, if you would, what I think are some essential or foundational commitments or choices um, you know, that, that will impact your current generation, those that are around you right now, and even the one that you will not see. Because parenting, again, is what? It's not just for the moment, it's for the long, long haul. So I'm going to abbreviate because of, of time a little bit some of the things that I might say, but I will make sure for those of you who are obsessive compulsive that all of the blanks are given to you so that you do not have problems this week sleeping or, you know, that kind of thing, all right? So let's just unpack this stuff this morning. Some commitments that I think God would have us make that we find very clearly in Scripture that will help us and will make better moms. And the first is this. It's the commitment to example. The commitment to example. This first commitment is a principle of example. It's the commitment to live a godly, honorable life. And we see that if you were using your Bibles in Timothy, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Titus chapter 2. Listen to this scripture, uh, scripture with me. The older women likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands, love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. So what's going on here? Paul tells Titus to grab hold of these older women. Now, that idea of older can really kind of be shot in two directions. It can have the idea of, of, of age, literal age, I'm older, or it can be put in the direction of those who have walked longer in the faith, those who have been in the things of Jesus longer. And so there's, there's some things you learn by just living. There are some things you learn because you've been living for Jesus, and you don't necessarily have to be old. 
to know them and to be able to give them away. And so Paul grabs Titus and he says, hey, get these older, whichever way you want to put it, women, tell these older women, don't be disconnected from younger women. Rather, be examples to them. And so, so he's saying here to, to tighten up this relationship here, this mentoring process, this discipling process, so that they can pass on something intentional and important to the next generation and those who are coming behind. What do they pass on? A couple things here, Titus chapter 2. First thing is that they pass on a love for their family. In verse 4 he says, love your family. Love your family. Now, the first step in making your home or your family a success is to love your husband and to love your children. And can I say this? To do it in that order. Do it in that order. You cannot be the mom or dads. You cannot be the dad that God wants you to be for your children if you are not placing priority on your relationship with your spouse, with your husband or your wife. You need to be showing your children that that relationship is a primary, a first place relationship. And when you do that, those other things will fall into place. They'll fall into place. And so there is there's a temptation, if you would, and, 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 and I'm just gonna say, women are just much more nurturing, I think. They're just more connected with feeling, and I, I hate to be a generalist or whatever, to, you know, and it's easy to get in trouble by saying those things, if you would, in the culture of today. And so it's very easy for moms to connect, if you would, a little bit more with their kids because they just feel that. They just feel that. But let me encourage you not to leave behind the relationship with your husband in order to do that because you're not going to be able to be all that you need to be for the kids if you're not first being all that you need to be for your husband, for your spouse. And so, so there, there can't be, if you would, competing compa- com- uh, passions, if you would, whether that's a husband or let's just say this. Loving your family means that your family is more important than a job. Loving your family means it's more important than a hobby or something that you like to do that's extracurricular. Loving your family means that you need to set aside some of those other things so that first thing can be first. Okay? Love your family. Second, let me suggest this. Live a godly life. Example has to do with not only who we're loving, but how we're living, and we need to live a godly life. And he shares some of these things. He shares two expressions, uh, particularly in in verse 5. And um, with regard to living this godly life, he says first this. He says that they need to be sober, that they need to be sober. And that's the idea of being self-controlled. It's not the idea of don't be given to wine or drink or whatever. It's not the idea of don't get drunk. It's the idea of being self-controlled, being under emotional control, being given to nurturing and relationship and stuff like that. It's very easy for emotions to kind of take over, and it's very easy to be overcome with emotions. And we're praying for, uh, for, uh, for this lady this morning, Cynthia. Um, and, and, you know, she's just struggling with all this going. In our world today, we have so many people who, for, for them, every event in their life is, is a red alert event. And so it's important to be sober and to, re- to be able to place things in a, in a, in a, in a way that, that, that your godliness shines through and that, and that things are put in, in their appropriate perspective and so we're, we're approaching these sober. We're, we're, not, we're not, you know, we're, we're thinking and we're acting right in the midst of those things. The second thing that he says in these verses, he says, for, for us to be stable. Living a godly life involves not only being self-controlled, but being stable, if you would. And again, it's that idea uh, of keeping your emotions and your impulses under control, uh, not thinking with your feelings. Um, you know, if, 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 if mom is being disciplined and is, is being able to manage these things and, and to navigate these things, that communicates a sense of security, it communicates a, a sense of, and, and it disciples their kids and helps their kids to do the same themselves. Be sober, be stable. Let me suggest finally this idea, to be spiritual. To nurture your spiritual life 
and in so do it so that it is transferred. If you would trans, it is poured into the life of your, co- your children. Very end of verse five, it says this, that the word of God may not be blasphemed, may not be reviled. So we want you to understand, and Paul says to Titus, hey, the actions and reactions of life all have implications. And so you have to have this example, an example of, of loving, an example of living that, that, that sets the stage and creates a picture of what it is to be a godly woman. And so number one, be an example. Let me suggest number two, a commitment to focus. A commitment to focus. And we're going to head to a different passage of Scripture here. There's four passages. Proverbs chapter 31 speaks about the issue of focus this morning. Proverbs 31, again, is a famous passage with regard to the whole issue of moms and, and the family. And the principle here, again, is focus. This is what it is, verse 27 and 28. It says, she watches over the ways of her household. She doesn't eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. The issue here, focus, focus. Um, one of the things, and, and I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll circle back to these in just a second. One of the things that is very easy to happen because it is very easy for people to be critical at times is when it comes to being a mom or being a a parent, it's very easy to be critical of people, uh, for, for moms to be critical or for people to be critical of moms who work outside the house as if they're not taking care of their kids. And it's very easy for those who are inside the house, vice versa. And we need, to, we need to let go of those things and allow people in their calling to follow God's leading in terms of the parenting and the things that they do. And so we want to, we want to lift up the mom who stays at home and we want to lift up and support and encourage the mom who goes out to work. And we're not going to look down on one or the other, but we're going to pray that they follow God's leading in the journey that they're in as parents and that they will be good stewards of what God has entrusted to them. And part of that has to do with focusing on what God has put before you. And so here in this verse, in in chapter 31, there are some things here that deal with the issue of focus. And so the first thing that we see here is that she does what? She keeps her home in order. She keeps her, she keeps her, she watches over the ways of her household. So no matter what you do, whether you're at home or you're out at work, you need to be taking care and making sure that your house is in order. And let me just say this, that's not just the responsibility of mom. Dad, you gotta help with this. You gotta help with this but she keeps her home in order. She looks well to the ways of her household. She's, she's not, and, and she may, she's not just about managing the home. When, when you say, when you say, how was your day? Um, you know, or when she comes to you, how was your day? She wants to know more, more than, you know, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> she wants to know what's going on. She wants to know where things are headed. She wants to know because, because she's, she's in this and she's involved in this. This is her, her, her workspace. This is her household. She wants to keep it in order. It says also here, she doesn't eat the bread of idleness, which means what? She, you know, she's not given to lazy to, or being lazy. Those are important things. No one should be given to laziness. But if a mom's taking care of the home and seeing over that, then... It's important not to be given to just resting all the time. Not only does she have to have her home in order, but she keeps the prize in mind. And there's a great verse at the end of this. As she keeps her home in order, as the home is put together correctly, what does the verse say? It says that her children rise up and they do what? They call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. And so 
there is this sense in which she is blessed. And, you know, it, it's not easy. Let's, let's, just, let's just face it. It's not easy to be a mom. It's not easy to keep the things of a house together. Even when the two of you are working at it, it's hard to keep all that together. But as you do it and as you give it your best as unto the Lord, what happened? The children of this person rise up and call her blessed. The husband says, great job. And he honors her. Now, I'm going to say something here that I, that I think is important, particularly as it relates to that idea. Never let your children talk down to their mom. Don't allow that. They should bless their mom. And children should be blessing their parents. And it's not appropriate in today's world where, where you can pretty much say anything that you want to anybody. It's not appropriate for, 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 for us to raise kids who are not respectful to their elders, but particularly to their parents. Our children should rise up, and as a result of our commitment to stewardship and our commitment to, to resourcing our kids to be what God wants, because of that and because they're, they're giving themselves to that, our children should be raised up and, and taught and learned and given the opportunity to bless their parents, especially their moms. It's important. So they have this example they live a life of focus. They focus on this home and they put it in order and, and they have a focus on a prize and they don't do it to get the prize, but because they do it, they receive a prize of this blessing. Third, let me suggest this. There is a commitment to stewardship and I've used this word several times, a commitment to stewardship of, 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 of overseeing this. And there's a great passage. This is 1 Samuel chapter 1 in the Old Testament and the principle there is, uh, is stewardship, and let me just give you the story quickly. Hannah and Elkanah are married, and they have been trying to have a kid for a long time. And they are praying, God, would you give us, give us a child, give us a child. And Hannah comes to God and says, you know what, if God, if you would give me a child, I will give that child back to you to serve you. And so it is after, after a season that Hannah and Elkanah, they have a child, and we know that child is named Samuel. It literally means asked of God. That's pretty cool. We asked God, and we begged God, and we prayed to God for a child, and God provided that, and so we're going to call him Samuel, asked of God. And so it is that, that God gave them the son, and in verse 27 it says, for this child... I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition, which I asked him. And so he, there is this stewardship that, you, that happens here with regard to this child and, and what is going to happen with, with this life. And one of the hardest things to do is, is to release our kids and to let them go. And Hannah's arrangement, if you would, or word to the Lord was, I will give him back to you. And so there is this release that Hannah does with Elkanah, releasing Samuel to the service of the Lord in the temple. And that's not easy, but the stewardship called for that, doing what was best for them. And, and so, so look, and this is today's transforming truth if you're following along with us, and it's this. The true privilege of parenting is found in preparing a life for life preparing a life for life. We, we are stewarding, we are working with our children to prepare them for their next step. We don't prepare them so that they can stay with us. And so what I'm saying is it's okay to tell your kid, don't you think it's about time for you to get your own place? That's okay. That's okay. Our stewardship involves preparing them for the next step. To live a life and learn about life, spiritual life, for life. And so it is that they raise him and they're given this privilege, this opportunity to shape this young life just as we are. And, and, and if you would, our children are alone to us by God. And in verse 28, he goes on to say this, therefore I also lend him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worship the Lord there. And so they release, and he, she uses this word, it's an interesting word, the idea of being lent. 
Um, and, and, and when we think about lending something, what do we think? I'm gonna get it back. I don't lend things, if you would, that I'm not expecting to get back. I give things that I'm giving away. If I lend something, I expect to get it back. In this context, and in this particular way, this particular word means the idea of being completely given over to God. Hannah and Elkanah are not expecting God to drop Samuel off again someday down the road and say, thanks for lending him to me. They have completely released him to what God has for him. And in the same way, we steward our children and we release our children recognizing that that we are lending them to God. They are just on loan to us. We are giving them back to God for God to use them in the things that he has called them to do. And we don't want to stand in that way. So there is an example. There is the idea of being the example that God wants us to be. There is the idea of going beyond the example, but the idea of focusing and doing the things that God has for us to do, living those things and participating in those things that God has for us to participate in. He gives us these children and the stewardship is for us to build into them so they live the life and we release them. And then finally, the fourth is this. There needs to be a commitment to release. And there's yet another passage of scripture that I'll just take you to briefly. It's in Mark chapter 3. And this is the fourth commandment. Don't stand in God's way. Release your kids. Um, Mark chapter 3 is pretty extraordinary. Um, And for some people, it's pretty alarming. And, um, you know, what Jesus is going to say about his mom. But in verse 31 in chapter 3, this is what Jesus says. His brothers and his mother came and standing outside, they sent to him calling him and a multitude was sitting around him and they said to him, look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. But he answered them saying, who is my mother or my brothers? And he looked around in the circle at those who sat around him, about him. And he said, here are my mother and brothers for whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. And you're like, Jesus, you... You can't, that's your mom. These are your, these are your brothers. It's important to be able to release our children to what God has for them in order for them to be free to pursue it. It doesn't mean that there is ever a point where you're not mom or dad, but there is a sense in which because they are alone to you and you are stewarding them, you do come to a place where you open your hand and you allow God to take them wherever it is God has for them to go. And let me tell you what, that's tough. I can't think of a time when we dropped off any of our kids at college where we didn't, one or the other or both of us cry because it was a moment for us of releasing our children and having to trust in the things that we had done before. Did we set the right example? Did we focus on the right things? Were we stewarding them the right way? But God calls on us to be able to release, and that is important. Good moms, good parents, good dads come to the place of releasing their children into the hands of God and entrusting them fully to him so that they are free to pursue the things that God has for them. And so you need to do two things here. And, and Mary and the brothers and stuff, they needed to do this, and Jesus is living in the midst of it. First, you need to let them leave. You need to let them leave. Some of you have been saying, I've been trying to do that. They just aren't, this ain't happening. All right? It's just, it hadn't happened yet. They're still in the basement. I know how to do this. If the basement floods, trust me, they're going to be on the move. They'll be on the move. But there's... You know, let them leave, and by way, of, by way of that, let me stop inviting them home. Stop creating avenues where they're, they're coming back. But allow them and put them in places where they really need to kind of stand up and, and make a way for themselves. You know, don't let them be homeless, but allow them to have that pressure where, hey, it's time for you to step up. It's time for you to do some adulting. It's time for you to, to navigate some of these challenges and to trust God in them and look to him in the midst of them. So let them leave, stop inviting them home. And second, I'm just gonna share this, celebrate their choices. Sometimes when we let our kids leave, mom and dad, um, they do some things that you say, 
<laughs> I don't know about that. And you wonder, where did that come from? Maybe they aren't going to go down all of the same roads that you would want them to go down. Maybe they won't make all of the same choices that you would have made or that you did make. But allow them to, to have that walk. Allow them to, to trust God and to listen to God in their life. Trust the things that you have poured into them and put into them and release them. Celebrate their choices. And, you know, um, it's, don't, it, you know, if you would, when they're young, you can do this. When they're older and stuff, don't pull the mom card, you know. I'm your mother. And you listen to me. Don't, don't pull the mom card. But allow them, if it's not sinful, it's just a matter of being different, then release them. Celebrate their choice. Pray for them. Do what you can to support them. Don't say, well, that's your decision, but I... You want to, you want to enable that relationship in the midst of doing that releasing too. So four thoughts for you today, just about being better moms, making great moms. Let me encourage you, set the example, set the example. Focus on the things that go into making great moms. Keeping that house together, doing those things that are, that are important and, and realizing and, and experiencing the prize, the prize that is yours as your kids and your, and your husband, uh, as they call you blessed. See your stewardship responsibility as given from God and, 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 and open the door, get them ready, prepare their life for life. And then finally do this, release them and trusting them to God. Let them go, let them go and celebrate in every way possible when you can the choices that they make as they seek to follow God and his leading for their life. So just a word for moms today. Moms, we love you. Ladies, we thank you so much for all that you do for us and how you serve us. We are a blessed people. You are blessed families. We are a blessed church because of the ladies that God has given us. And so may today be a very special day for each and every one of you. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this morning. And Lord, we, uh, we do pray and we ask that God, you would give, as has already been sung, that you would give hope and that you would give comfort, that, Lord, you would give joy, that you would give peace, and that, Lord, in the midst of all that goes on in our world and in our families and our culture, that, God, you would give a reassurance and, a, and an abundant sense of your presence with each and every mom and lady who's here today. Lord, we recognize that we cannot do the things we've talked about apart from you working in us, and so may it be that, Christ, you would work through us. Be with us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Let's close today by standing and singing, Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me. Let's sing together.
There is no endeavor we undertake in our spiritual life, in our walk with Jesus, that it doesn't require Christ to be working in us. When we try in our own strength, we fail, we fall short. And so may it be moms today and dads as we look forward to Father's Day that we're just reminded of the hope and the comfort that comes from Christ and the fact that he is with you in your journey. And so may he bless you as mom, as, as the lover of the kids in your neighborhood. May he bless you as grandma or auntie, however it is that you're seen. May it be that you be the example, that you steward what he has entrusted to you. May it be that you focus on what he has told you is important. And may it be that after doing so, you release them and entrust them to God and allow God to do what it is that he desires to do in their heart and life. Thank you so much for being here today. God bless you and give you a wonderful Mother's Day. There's a lot out in the commons for you to touch base with, and so we want to encourage you to do so. As you leave today, our deaconess is going to give you a gift, ladies. We uh, just want to honor you again and say how much we love you. I'm going to be out on the sidewalk outside. Look forward to greeting you there, and um, I trust that God will give you a wonderful day. Our benediction this morning from the book of Numbers, chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let me encourage you to wait, please, as the ushers come and release you, and uh, we will see you outside. God bless.